Hi everybody, it's Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make that long oversized hooded sweatshirt with the pocket that you just saw in the picture. I would show you here on the desk, but it's way too big to even maneuver around with. But I'll show you what I used here. Now, I have it available in three different sizes. The only thing different is the chain amount. So, well, I, what I used is uh, Bernat baby blanket yarn and you're probably all pretty familiar with this it's a 100% polyester yarn super soft <clears throat> the color I use is called baby teal of course you can use any color that you like it's a super bulky number six you don't necessarily have to use this any super bulky bulky yarn will work but this is actually extra soft so I think it makes the hood as well sure even that much more cozy and special um, there are 72 yards per skein now, for the extra large size, I used um, 14 skeins. Now, I, I didn't make the 2X or the 3X, so I'm going to give you a guess. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm going to say I used 14 for mine. You might need 4 or 5 more for the 2X and maybe 8 or so more for the 3X. Now, don't hold me to that. That's just a guess because I didn't make it, but um, for the extra large size... Uh, 14 skeins of this is what I use and I think they do have jumbo rolls of that but I'm not sure what the yard is or yardage did on it but there's 72 yards in each one of these and then I used a size Q hook which is a 15.75 millimeter crochet hook now if I'm gonna make the extra large size now for the extra large size you want to start off with a chain of 41 2x you want to start off with a chain of 51 and for 3x you want to start off with a chain of 61 okay so once you get your chain made either the 41 the 51 or the 61 what you want to do is single crochet in the second stitch from the hook it's actually really easy and then we're going to single crochet in each stitch until we get to the end of the chain I did mine a little shorter because I already have my big piece made, so I'm just kind of showing you how it's done. So go ahead and do one single crochet in every stitch for the length of your chain. Okay, once you make it to the end of your chain, extra large size you should have 40 stitches, 2x you should have 50, and 3x you should have 60. Now all it is is just rows of single crochet back and forth so we just chain one and we turn and we're going to go right back into this very very first stitch and single crochet and then we're going to single crochet in every stitch across the row just like this until you get to the end Okay, once you make it to the end of row two, you still should have your same stitch count. Extra large will have 40 stitches, 2x will have 50, and 3x will have 60. Now we're just going to keep repeating that row. We just chain one and turn, and then we're going to single crochet into that first stitch. And then one single crochet in every stitch for the length of the, <coughs> to the end of the row. So it's just back and forth rows of single crochet. That's all it is. And you'll always have the same stitch mount, stitch uh, number at the end. Um, extra large will be 40, 2x will be 50, and 3x will be 60. So you just want to continue across doing rows of single crochet. So it's, it's really a pretty easy pattern to do. Okay, I went ahead and did a total of 44 rows. But now we're going to start the neck. So it'll be different for which size you're doing. Remember, I'm doing the extra large size. So what I want to do is, I'm going to move my camera over here. You're going to need two stitch markers. I'm just going to use these pieces of yarn here. And what you want to do is you want to count in equally on each side. So you come up with two stitches that are open in the middle. So since I chained 40, 
I want to count in 19 stitches from each side. Nineteen, and then I want to put a stitch marker into the next one, like that. Now, if I count over from the other side, I want to count nineteen. And put that'll leave me one stitch left, and I'll put a stitch marker into that one also. So that leaves me two stitches, and I'm going to leave those stitches unworked for now. Now, this is for the one, the extra large size. Now, if you're doing a 2x, you chained um, 50 in the beginning. So you want to count over uh, 24 stitches, and then put a stitch marker in the next on both sides. And the 3x, you did a chain of 60 so you'll want to count over uh, 29 stitches on each side and put a stitch marker in the two that's in the center. I hope that makes sense. So now once you get that all taken care of, we're going to start again by chaining one and turning our work. Now I don't have a lot of counter space, which you probably already know if you watch my videos. But we're going to work up until we get to these um, these, this first stitch marker. So I'm going to go ahead and single crochet into that first stitch and I'm going to put one single crochet in every stitch until I get to my first stitch marker. Oops, I knocked a hook off. Those hooks always chain so loud. I'll just keep going here on camera and try not to bore you. Okay, we're almost there. Now, no matter what size you do, you just work up until you get to your first stitch marker. Okay, go into the stitch next to the stitch marker. Do not go into the stitch that has the stitch marker. Now we're going to chain one and turn our work. So we didn't go into that stitch, we just left it. Now we're going to do a single crochet decrease into over the, and it's worked over two stitches. So we're going to go in to the very, very first stitch and draw up a loop. And then we're going to go into the next stitch and draw up a loop. And we'll have three loops on our hook and we're going to yarn over and go through all three loops. So that took two stitches and made it into one. Now what we're going to do is work across and put one single crochet in every stitch until we get to the end. No matter what size you're doing, you do, you do yours the same. You know, if you're just doing the bigger size, you will have more chains or more stitches than I will. Okay, when you get to the end, we will chain one, turn our work again, and start working across again. So single crochet into your first stitch, and now we're going to work one single crochet in every stitch. What we're doing is kind of putting a little bit of a V in the front of the um, sweatshirt. I guess so it's not so plain. Something to hook hood to and something a little different, I guess. Go 
So I'm going to put one single crochet in every stitch. We're not going to decrease this row. So this last stitch right here where we decrease, just go ahead and put one single crochet in it. Now we're going to chain one and turn our work. And now we're going to do a decrease again in the first row like we did before. So we're going to go into the very first stitch and drop a loop. And then we're going to go into the next stitch and drop a loop. And then we're going to yarn over and go through all three loops. And now we're going to continue by working one single crochet in every stitch until we get to the end of the row. Okay, chain one and turn again, and we're going to do this, go across again, one single crochet in every stitch, so go into that very first stitch, and then one single crochet, and every stitch across. I just thought I'd just stay with you the whole time while I'm doing the neck, not cutting off so we don't get confused. Hope that's okay. Okay, we're gonna just we're not gonna decrease this round. We're just gonna go all the way to the end, put one single crochet in every stitch. So here's our last stitch where we decrease on the previous round. Single crochet into that. Now we're gonna chain one and turn. And now we will do another decrease. So we will go into the very first stitch and drop a loop, go into the next stitch, drop a loop, yarn over and go through all three loops. And now we'll work one single crochet in every stitch until we get to the end of the row. Okay, I'm going to take one second and look at it because I don't have a formal pattern for this written up now. I'm just kind of winging it as I go, so I'm just going to see here. Okay, now what we're going to do is we are going to, let's see, chain one and turn, and we're going to do one more row across. Now, this will not be a decrease row, so we're just going to do one single crochet in every stitch all the way across and then we're going to tie our yarn off right here and then we're going to go to the other side and do this same thing sometimes when I make these projects I'm going to blab a little bit I don't Actually, a lot of times I don't have nothing really knowing what I'm going to do next. So sometimes I don't even know if it's going to turn out. I just hope that it does. Okay. One in every stitch. We're not going to decrease. So here's our last stitch that we decreased in the previous round. Single crochet into that. And I'm going to tie this off right now. Clip my yarn. like that okay so we got a little bit of a v there okay now we're going to start our yarn here's where our 
two stitch markers are. We're not working in these stitches now. So here's the first side that we did right here. I don't know why I got something on my yarn there. And it's like really noticeable. Okay, <laughs> here's the first one. Here's the next one. We're going to start in this stitch here. We're not going to work in the stitch with the stitch marker. So go ahead and start your yarn into that first stitch. And we're going to decrease the same way. So we're going to chain one. And we're going to go back into the same stitch and single crochet. And we're going to put one single crochet in every stitch to the end of the row. So no decrease on this first row because we did not decrease on the first row of the last round. Okay, when you make it to the end, we will chain one and turn, and now we're going to do our decrease when we get back down here to the other side. So we'll go ahead and single crochet into the very first stitch, and we're going to work one single crochet in every stitch until we get to the last two stitches, and then we will decrease over those last two stitches. Okay, I've made it to my last two stitches right here. So we want to decrease over them. We're going to go into the first one and drop a loop, and then the last one and drop a loop, and yarn over and go through all three loops. Now we're going to chain one and turn our work. And we are going to do one single crochet in every stitch across. So we would just go into that very first stitch single crochet and then work one single crochet in every stitch. We're doing the same thing we did on the other side. We're just doing it kind of opposite because we're working on the other side. If that makes any sense. But it's still going to be the same. I'm ripping out some yarn from a previous project I was doing with this so that's what that noise was. Okay, and then when we make it to the end, we're going to chain one and turn. And now the next row is going to be a decrease row. So we're going to if I can get my yarn untangled here. Single crochet into that very first stitch and you want to single crochet in every stitch until you get to your last two stitches and then we'll decrease over them. Okay, let's see. I think I'm coming up with my last two. Yeah. 
Okay, I made it to my last two stitches here. So I'm going to go in to the first stitch and drop a loop and then into the last stitch and drop a loop and then I'm going to yarn over and go through all three. Then I'm going to chain one, turn my work, and now it's one single crochet in every stitch now. So go right into that first stitch, single crochet, and then one single on every stitch across. Okay, made it to the end here. Okay, so now we're going to chain one and turn. Now we're going to do another decrease, and this will be the last decrease. So we're going to single crochet into the first stitch and then into every stitch until I get to my last two stitches. Okay, last two stitches, go ahead and decrease over them, go into the first one and drop a loop, and then the next one and drop a loop, and yarn over and go through all three. Now one more time, we're going to chain one and turn, and then we're just going to go across and put one single crochet in every stitch. And that is about as big of a V as I'm going to make for the front, so we'll start doing something different after this. Okay, I made it to the end here. Okay, so now you should have a total regardless of what size you're doing. Um, from here down, 51 rows on both sides would be the same. So what we're going to do now is make another spot for the neck. So we can remove these two stitch markers here because we're going to place them somewhere else now. Okay, for my size, the extra large, um, counting... I'm trying to push it back so you can see it. This row at the top, I have 16. And then this row over here, I have 16. So I have a total of 32 stitches for the extra large size. Now, if you did 2X, you should have 10 more than me. So you should have um, 42 stitches. And the 3X should have 52. So what we did when we decreased, we lost 8 stitches. Regardless of what size you made, we, we, just lost, we still lost 8 stitches. Now, the stitch markers I'm about ready to place is going to be the same regardless of what size you make, too. This is going to be for the neck hole. So what we're going to do is we're going to count over five stitches, and we're going to put the stitch marker in the fifth stitch from here. One, two, three, four, five. And this is regardless of what size you're making. Remember, it's the same. The neck hole is going to be the same. So there's five. It's in the fifth one, and we're going to do the same over here. One, two, three, four, five. Put that stitch marker in that fifth stitch. Just like that. Okay, so we're going to pick up 
where we left off. So let me get my piece to where we left off. Turned around here. I got so much stuff up here okay so, so I'm at where we left off and I'm going to chain one and turn my work okay now I'm gonna work up every stitch up until I get to my first stitch marker so one single in the very first stitch and then one single in every stitch until I get to my first stitch marker now I do not want to go into that stitch marker So whatever size you're doing, you just work up until you get to your stitch marker. Okay, I've made it to my marker. Now I'm not going to single crochet into that marker. I'm going to leave these five stitches open. Now what I want to do is a chain of 18. Now what that chain of 18 is work is standing for it's it's counting for the eight that we lost when we did the V plus this five we're skipping plus this five we're skipping so what we need to do what we're doing is bringing our stitch count back up to what it was when I started mine was 40 so if you're you know if you're doing the next size bigger you'll bring you bringing yours back up to 50 and 3x you bring be bringing yours back up to 60 so regardless of what size you did right now you still need to chain 18 because it's going to be the same for every size. There's 18. Now I don't want to twist my chain, but I'm going to bring it all the way over here and I'm going to single crochet into the stitch past the stitch marker. Single crochet right into it like that. And now I'm going to put one single crochet in every stitch until I get to the end of my row, regardless of what size you're doing. Just keep going until you get to the end of the row. It's like that. Now, if you count your stitches across, including that chain of 18, you should be back to up to your original count. So I'll have 40 right now. And if you've done the bigger size, at 2x, you should have 50. 3x, you should have 60. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to continue working. So this is our neck hole. And this is where we will attach our hood later. So what we're going to do is just continue working um, now we're going to be working on the back of the sweatshirt. So we're just going to chain one and turn our work. And I'm going to work single crochet into the first stitch. One single crochet in every stitch. Till I get to my chain and then I'm going to put one single crochet in every stitch of the chain. Remember there was 18 so you'll need to get 18 stitches across. You can move these stitch markers now. We don't need them anymore if they're bugging you or if they're in your way. So every stitch of the chain you'll have 18 stitches. You want to make sure you get 18 out of it. I'm trying to think of which way to be the best here. It's always hard working the stitches of a chain, I think.
I got twisted my chain. I hate that. There's 17. Oh, and I got one more for 18. Sometimes that last one's hard to get it because it gets tight. But there's my 18 stitches of the chain. And now I'm going to continue across, putting one single crochet in every stitch until I get to the end of the row. And now for me, I will be back up to my 40 original stitches. And depending on what size you did, you should be back up to your original count, whether it be 50 or 60 stitches. Okay, and then we're just going to chain one and turn our work. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to keep working our one single crochet in every stitch like we did for the front part. Until we we're on uh, we just did row 52 and we're working on row 53 we want to do it until we reach a hundred and two rows because remember we had 51 was to right here and we want to double that so 102 rows and we're on row 52 we just finished row 52 and now we're going to start row 53 so we want to keep going until we get a hundred and two rows and So back and forth, back and forth, until you get 102 rows done. Okay, once you get your 102 rows done, now what we're going to do is we're going to go around, we're going to put single crochet just around both of the long sides. Not across the short, shot, short side, short, short side, not yet anyways. So um, if there's a front of it that you think looks they both kind of look the same front and back looks the same to me but if there's a one that you like better than the other put the right side of your work facing you like this and then we'll go around I already did this one I went around that long edge with single crochet and now we need to do it both to both sides so I'll flip it over and we'll start the other side so you want to start right up here into the corner okay you just want to start into the very first stitch down here and pull your yarn through and chain one make sure though if you have a side that you like better they both look the same really to me but if there's a side that you prefer make it facing you right now so chain one and then go back into that same stitch and single crochet Now what we're going to do is put one single crochet in every stitch up the side. And you should be able to tell where they go. It's at the end of every row is where you'll put the single crochet. So you can kind of see it right here. Shouldn't be too hard to tell. And you want to make sure you count because we need to have the same number on each side. So go ahead and continue working up your long side, putting one single crochet in every stitch, which is actually just one single crochet at the end of every row. So you can see I'm pretty good of where they need to go. So I'm going to continue this up until I get up to the end and then I'll meet you. I'll meet you up there. We're just cleaning up these edges. That way when we, when we sew it together, it'll be a lot easier to sew it together in the in these single crochets instead of just leaving it like this. That's why I'm doing this. So make it easier on us. So I'm going to go up, keep going until I get to the top. 
Okay, I've made it to the end of the row and I have 102 stitches, which is what I should have because I had 102 stitches, um, 102 rows. But I'm going to make it 103 by single crocheting into the top stitch of this first row. So that, just go ahead and single crochet into that, and that'll make it 103 stitches. And then you can just clip that and tie it off. Now you want to do the same on both rows. And when you do the other row, you'll be starting in this top stitch. So make sure you go single, or you start single crocheting in that top stitch and then work your way up. And you'll have 103 on that side too. So that's what you want, 103 on both sides. And tie that off. For some reason, my scissors keep getting lost up in this big, this, <laughs> this big uh, sweatshirt. My scissors get lost in it. So clip that off. And then you want to do both sides the same and you want to end up with 103 stitches. Let's see what I got going on here. Okay. Once you get that, you get both sides done. You want to flip your work wrong side out. So these stitches that you just did on the edge, you want to flip it to where they're wrong side. Like that. Because we're going to uh, sew it together now. So let me get my straightened out real quick. Okay, so now we're going to sew it up and mark off for the sleeves. And remember, I have the wrong side of my work facing me. So the wrong side's here, and I flip it over. And the wrong side's there. So that way when we flip it right side out, it will be, the seam will be hidden. Okay, so we're going to count up. I'm going to do, um, let me move this out of the way. It's just so big, I'm sorry. Okay, you want to count up. Take your first piece and count up 32 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 32. And it's the same regardless of what size you're using. We're going to make the sleeves the same. So 32 stitches there. Put a stitch marker. And then we're going to go to the bottom piece and count 32 stitches again. We're working from the bottom up on both pieces. Count 32 stitches. Here's the bottom of my work. Count up. Okay, once you get 32 stitches, hold them together and put your stitch marker in between both of them. And you want to do the same thing on the other side also. 32 stitches up. So, right here is our armhole. And it's big, because we're gonna, it's a big, it's going to be a big sweater, you know, oversized sweatshirt. So, there's our armhole. So, we're going to slip stitch this together. Remember, we're going to do both sides the same. So I'll just show you how to do this side, and then we'll do the other side. I'll do the other side off camera. So once you counted from the bottom up 32 stitches on both of your pieces here, we're going to take it and slip stitch it together. So I'm going to use my yarn. And I'm actually going to start in the stitch that my stitch marker is in. So since it's marked off, you can go ahead and take it out. Just keep a hold of both stitches together. Go into the front loop of this stitch and the back loop of this stitch, like that. So you actually only have two loops on your hook. Pull through and chain one. Now what we're gonna do is that same thing all the way down. We're gonna go grab the next stitch and we're gonna go through the front loop of it only and then the back loop of the opposite stitch on the opposite side, like that, and slip stitch. Like that. Again, the front loop on the piece that's closest to you, and the back loop on the piece that's furthest away. So you can tell there's a front and a back. Go through the back loop of it. Like that. Go to the next one. Go through the front loop of it and then the back loop of it, the next piece, slip stitch, the 
front loop of the next piece and then the back loop of the next piece slip stitch and we're going to do this continue doing this all the way down front loop of the next one and back loop make sure you're keeping your stitches lined up that way though you'll have an equal number when you get to the bottom front loop on this piece back loop on this piece so I'm going to continue this until I get to the bottom Okay, I've made it to the bottom, and I just want to go ahead and tie this off, put my yarn, like that. Now, I want before I go to the next side, I want to come up here and make sure, I want to hide this tail. So, you can use a big, thick needle. You want to make sure you hide it now so it doesn't come on loose. If you got one of these big, thick needles, those work good. If not, you can use, kind of weave it through with a smaller crochet hook, but... I'm just going to kind of weave it in so it doesn't come undone when we do our sleeves. I found that out the hard way. It's always good to just weave this, the start, the place where you started to sleep, weave that tail in. That way you can just forget about it and then you don't have to worry about it. I've done it before, started my sleeves, didn't weave that tail in, and for some reason it came undone and then it was a big old mess. I just don't deal with that anymore. It's easier just to do this. There, now that's done with and we don't have to worry about that anymore. Now what we're gonna do is uh, flip it over to the other side and do the same thing that we just did, only on this side. So, we want to count up 32 stitches from the bottom on both pieces start our yarn in the in that piece so we'll, let me go ahead and count there's a stitch mark there just like that and then I'm going to count up the next one In there so I'm not gonna really put a stitch marker in both of them I'm just gonna hold them both in my hands take that stitch marker out and I'm gonna start my yarn in the front loop of the 32nd one here and in the back loop of the 32nd one on that piece and I'm gonna do the same thing that I just did on the other side slip stitch it together so go through those loops chain one and I'm gonna go into the front loop of the next piece in the back loop of the next piece, slip stitch. Front loop of the next, back loop of the next, slip stitch. Front loop on this piece, back loop on this piece, and slip stitch. So I'm just doing the same thing I did before. So I'm gonna go ahead and work my way down until I get to the end, and then I will tie that off, and then I'll come back up and hide this tail and then we'll flip it right side out and see what she looks like. Hopefully she has clean seams. Okay, once you get both sides sewed up, this is what your seam should look like. And I think it looks actually pretty clean. Looks pretty nice. And then you got your arm openings, which we'll deal with them later. But first, I'm going to go around the bottom. So, with your work right side facing you, we're going to work on the bottom. So, get it situated to where you can work on the bottom. Make sure your work's facing right side out now. It's hard for me to get <laughs> folded up in an area that is easy for you to see. But, okay. We're going to start... And we're going to do a row of decreases on the bottom first. So here's going to be the hardest part, I think, to see 
what we're doing is in the seam area. But you see the seam here has two stitches. One here and one here in between these lines here. We're going to start in this stitch right next to it. It might be kind of tight feeling, but go right into that one. It may not even actually look like it's stitched to you, but it is. So go right into that one. And that's where we're going to start our yarn. Like I said, it'll be a little bit tight. Go ahead and chain one and go back into that same stitch and single crochet. Now we want to have six single crochets in a row. So that is our first one. So we're going to do five more. So six total. So this will be one, two, three, four, five, and then there's six. Now what we're going to do is decrease over the next two stitches. So we're going to go into the next stitch and drop a loop, and then we're going to go into the next one and drop a loop. Just like that. So that took two stitches and made it into one. Now we're going to kind of repeat that pattern all the way around. So we want to do six more single crochets in a row. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we'll decrease over the next two. So we go into the next one and drop a loop, and then go into the next one and drop a loop. Yarn over and go through all three loops. So I'm going to repeat this six single crochets and a decrease until I get over here to my next seam and I'll show you what we do there. Okay, I've made it over here to my seam. Now I want to do my six single crochets in a row. Now if you made yours larger, like the 2x and the 3x, um, you still do it the same. You're just going to have a different number of stitches than me. And now remember, when you get next to this, this right here is a stitch, even though it may not look like it. And then when you get to your seam here, you can see the seam. There's a stitch right here you need to go into, and a stitch right here you need to go into. Very kind of hard to, to get it right, but there we go. And then remember this thing right next to the seam? It's real tight, but it counts as a stitch. Go right into that. And then continue your pattern of six single crochets in a row, and then a single crochet decrease. So that's how you kind of get around the edges. Now right now, Remember, yours is going to be a, a little different if you did the bigger size, but still continue doing the six single crochets and then the decrease. No matter what size you're doing, it's the same decrease. So I'm going to continue this around until I get back to the beginning. Okay, I have made it back around to the beginning. And I have a total now of 76 stitches for my size. Now, if you're doing my size and you didn't end up with 76 stitches, don't worry about it. The only thing you need to do is make sure you end up with an even number of stitches. Um, so say you have 77, just pull one out and uh, skip it and just uh, slip stitch into the first stitch. Or if you end up with 77 at the last stitch, just put another one in it and make it 78. It, as long as it's even, it's fine. And the same goes for bigger sizes. You're not going to have 76. You're going to have a few more than me. And as long as it's an even number, it's fine. If you end up with an odd number at the last stitch, just put an extra one in it and make it even. It's, it's no big deal on the stitch count as long as it's an even number. Okay, so once we got that done and we got our even number, what we're going to do is chain one and go back into that same stitch and double crochet. 
So now we're going to work a row of one double crochet in every stitch all the way around. This is, we're just going to put a band at the bottom real quick. Just a simple little band. So this row will be easy. One double crochet in every stitch until you get back to the beginning. And when you get back around, you should have the same number of stitches that you had in the previous round. Like I had 76, so I should still have 76. If you had 78 or, you know, if you did a bigger size and you had more than me, that's fine as long as this round you have the same amount. So just continue around working one double crochet in every stitch until you get back over here to your starting point. Okay, once you make it around, once that uh, around a double crochet and you have the same number that you had before, go ahead and end with a slip stitch into your first double crochet. Now what we're going to do is chain one and go back into that same stitch and double crochet. Now the next stitch, what we're going to do is put a front post double crochet around it. So we're going to yarn over and just go around the post of the stitch like that and then do our double crochet. And that's going to create a little bit of a ribbing for around the bottom. Now the next stitch, I'm just going to do a regular double crochet into the top of it. And then the next stitch will be a front post double crochet. So you just yarn over, go around the post of it like that, and double crochet. And I'm going to repeat this pattern all the way around. A regular double crochet into the top of the next stitch. And then a front post double crochet around the post of the next stitch. Regular double crochet into the next and then a front post double crochet around the post of the next. And you just repeat this all the way around until you get back to the beginning. Okay, once you make it back around, your last stitch should have been a back post double crochet. And just go ahead and end with a slip stitch into your first double crochet. Now I'm just going to do one more thing before we're finished with the bottom. I'm going to chain one, and I'm going to put a single crochet in every stitch all the way around, just to clean up that bottom edge. So I'm going to go right back into that same stitch, and single crochet. And I'm going to put one single crochet in every stitch until I get back to the beginning. So you should still be, should have the same number of single crochets as you did the previous row when you get back around. Just like that, one single in every stitch, and that'll clean up that nice that edge at the bottom real nice. Okay, you may make it back around after that last row of single crochet on the bottom. Go ahead and end the slip stitch and the first single crochet. And we'll tie that off, hide that tail. Next, we'll start on the sleeves. Okay, now we'll start on the sleeves. And both sleeves are work, gonna be worked the same. So it doesn't matter which one you start on. So if you see here in your sleeves, look here. Here's the, the two stitches that we, you can see that uh, where we slip stitched earlier, the seam up. Go up to this, the next one, and the next one on this side, and put your hook through both of those stitches, and start your yarn through both of those. So pull through both of them, and chain one. Now go back through those same two stitches, and single crochet like that and now we're going to work split 
one single crochet in every stitch. That was the only stitch that we worked through two. The rest is just going through one stitch. So one single crochet in every stitch around your sleeve until you get back to this starting point here. So just like this, all the way around the sleeve until you get back over here. Okay, once you make it back around to your starting point, you should have 38 stitches. Now, we do the sl sleeves the same regardless of what size that you're making. So when you get your 38 stitches here, that will be round one in the sleeves. So we're going to put a stitch marker right here because we're going to work in a continual round for the sleeves. So put the stitch marker there. Now we're going to work um, two more rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. So that was round one we just did, 38 stitches. So round two and three are going to be the same thing. We're just going to jump over here to the first stitch that we did, right here, and single crochet into it. Like that. And then we're going to work around, putting one single crochet in every stitch until we get to our stitch marker and you'll have 38 stitches at the end of round two and then you just move your stitch marker up and go around again one single crochet in every stitch for round three so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and finish out uh, round two and three of one single crochet in every stitch and I'll meet back up with you when I finish that and we'll start round four of the sleeve. Okay, I made it to the end of round three and I have my 38 stitches still. So I'm gonna go ahead and move my stitch marker up. Now we're gonna do a row of decreases. So we're gonna do a single crochet decrease over the first two stitches. So we're gonna go into the first stitch and drop a loop and then go into the next stitch and drop a loop and yarn over and go through all three loops like that. Now we're going to put one single crochet into the next seven stitches. One, two, three, four, And seven and now we're going to do a decrease again over the next two stitches so we're going to go into the next stitch and drop a loop and into the next one drop a loop yarn over and go through all three loops and then again one single crochet into the next seven stitches And then decrease again over the next two stitches. Go into the next one, drop a loop. Go into the next one, drop a loop, yarn over, and go through all three loops. And then we're just going to repeat that all the way around. One single crochet in the next seven, and then decrease again. And repeat that until you get back to your stitch marker. Okay, when you make it to the end, you should have two stitches left and you just want to decrease over those last two stitches. And then you should have a total of 33 stitches now at the end of round four. Now what we're going to do is three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. So rounds five, six, and seven are just going to be one single crochet in every stitch all the way around. And you should have 33 stitches each Time you get back around to your stitch marker. So I'm going to go ahead and continue. I'm going to do five, six, and seven, one single crochet in every stitch, 33 stitches at the end of every round, and I'll meet you at the end of round seven. 
Okay, I've made it to the end of round seven. <clears throat> so I'm going to do a row of decreases again for round eight. So I'm going to pull my stitch marker up. And now I'm going to start off by doing a decrease over the first two stitches. Go in the first stitch, drop a loop. Go in the next stitch, drop a loop. Yarn over and go through all three loops. Now I'm going to do one single crochet in the next four stitches. So there's one, two, three, and four. And then I'm going to decrease over the next two again. So go into the next one, drop a loop. Go into the next one, drop a loop. Yarn over, go through all three. And then again, one single crochet in the next four. One, two, three, four, oh, and then decrease over the next two. So this is a pattern that I'm going to repeat for round eight of the sleeve. Now I'm going to do one single crochet in the next four, then decrease. Single crochet in the next four and decrease all the way back around to my stitch marker. Okay, I'm coming to the end of row eight and I just did a decrease and I have one stitch left. So I'm going to go ahead and just put one single crochet into that last stitch. And now you should have a total of 27 stitches at the end of round eight. So you want to go ahead and move your stitch marker up. Now we're going to be working rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. So we're going to start round nine. And we're just going to work one single crochet in every stitch. We want to do nine rounds of one single crochet in every stitch and you'll have 27 stitches at the end of every round. So rounds 9 through 17 we will do one single crochet in every stitch. Move our marker up at the end of every round. 27 stitches at the end of every round. So I'm going to keep going round and round one single crochet in every stitch. We're on round nine now until I finish round 17. And then I will meet back up with you at the end of round 17. Okay, I finished up to round 17 and I'm getting ready to start round 18. So I'm gonna decrease this round. So I'm gonna pull my stitch marker up. I still should have 27 stitches. So I'm gonna go ahead and decrease over these first two stitches. So go into the first one, drop a loop. And the next one, drop a loop. Yarn over, go through all three. Now I'm going to put one single crochet in the next seven stitches. One, two, three, <clears throat> four, five, six, seven, and then I'm going to decrease over the next two. And that's a repeat now for round 18. One single crochet in the next seven and then decrease all the way back to the beginning. Okay, I've made it to the end of round 18 and you should have been able to complete your repeat uh, evenly. So I did a decrease and then I had seven stitches left and now I have a total of 24 stitches now at the end of round 18. So now I'm going to move my stitch marker up and now I'm going to do rounds of one single crochet in every stitch and I want to do three rounds. So we just finished round 18. Now I'm working on round 19, one single crochet in every stitch. I want to do 19, 20, and 21 with one single crochet in every stitch, 24 stitches at the end of each round. So I'm going to go ahead and do 19, 20, and 21, and I'll meet you at the end of round 21, and we'll still have 20 four stitches. Okay, I just finished round 21 and I still have 24 stitches so I'm going to move my stitch marker up. Now round 22 we're going to decrease. We're going to decrease over the first two stitches again. So go into the first stitch, drop a loop. The next one, drop a loop. Yarn over, go through all three. And now we're going to put one single crochet into the next four stitches. So there's one two, three, and four. And now we're going to decrease over the next two again. Go into the next stitch, drop a loop. The next one, drop a loop. Yarn over, go through all three. And then we're going to repeat that. One single crochet in the next four, and then a decrease all the way around into the beginning. 
Okay, I've made it back around. I think around 22, and you should have that should have been finished out equally. I did a decrease, and then I have four stitches left. So I'm gonna go, and now I have a total of 20 stitches at the end of round 22. So I'm gonna move my stitch marker up, and now I'm going to work one single crochet in every stitch, and I'm gonna do that for three rounds. So rounds, we're working on round 23 right now. 23, 24, and 25 are all one single crochet in every stitch, and there will be 20 stitches at the end of each round. So I'm gonna get my work up until I finish round 25 and I'll have 20 stitches at the end and then I'll meet you when I get there. Okay, I've made it to the end of round um, 25 and I still have my 20 stitches. So I'm going to pull my stitch marker out, move it up. Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and slip stitch now into the first single or the first single crochet, slip stitch into it. And I guess you won't even need this stitch marker anymore. So now we're going to do a row of double crochet. So we're going to chain one and then go right back into that same stitch that I just slip stitched into and work a double crochet. Like that. And now I'm going to work one double crochet in every stitch around back to the beginning. So this is round 20 six that we're working on and it's just one double crochet in every stitch all the way around and when you get back around you still should have 20 stitches we will not be decreasing anymore just like that okay i've made it to the end of round 26 and i want to go ahead and end with the slip stitch into my first double crochet i still have 20 stitches and now I'm going to do the front post double crochet like we did at the bottom to make the ribbing on the sleeves so it's just going to be the same thing we're going to chain one go back into the same stitch and double crochet and then the next stitch will be a front post double crochet so we're just going to yarn over and go around the post of the stitch and do a double crochet and then we'll do a regular double crochet into the top of the next stitch and then a front post double crochet around the post of the next stitch. So it's just like the bottom. Regular double crochet. And then a front post double crochet. And you wanna repeat this all the way around until you get back to the beginning. Okay, I've made it to the end of round 28, your last stitch, or 27, I'm sorry, your last stitch should have been a front post double in with a slip stitch into your first double crochet you still st should still have 20 stitches now round 28 is our last round and we're just going to go around it with the round of single crochet so i'm going to chain one go right back into that same stitch and single crochet and i'm going to single crochet into the top of every stitch all the way around just to clean up the edge so one single crochet every stitch until you get back to the beginning and this is round 28 It'll be our last round okay you want to go ahead and end round 28 by slip stitching into your first single crochet not that chain one but the first single 20 stitches you should have flip your yarn off and hide that tail and then you want to go ahead and do the other sleeve the exact same way Okay, let's work on the hood now. Um, so you want to have your work facing um, right side up, like I have it here. And we'll start in the, you see the, let me move my camera over here, the V right here that we made. Now we're not going to be working in that right now. We're just going to work the very first stitch right up here at the top of the V. That's where you want to start your yarn. Sorry if my camera is at a weird angle, but it's just, this thing's big. <laughs> so, chain one, now go back into that same stitch, and single crochet, and now we're going to single crochet in every stitch, all the way across until we get to this 
top of this, uh, I call this the V, but the top of this over here. Now, when we get to here, you can see these stitches right here. They're kind of on the side there. Just go right through the whole thing and do one single crochet in each of those. Like that. And then you'll continue along the back of your work putting one single crochet in every stitch. Trying to get this at the best angle for you, but now I'm working on the back side of the hood where that chain 18 was from um, a long time ago, if you remember that, from when we first made the neck. That's what I'm working on right now. Going across that. I'm working around here. Getting ready to work around the corner again. And we're right here where these two, where these spaces are here. Just kind of do what you did on the other side. Go through them like that. And then continue working across the front until you get to the top point of that V, which is coming up. Right here is the last stitch for me. Like that. And you, th you should have 32 stitches now. Now, it's probably not, doesn't have to be exact, but you need to have, try to get it as close to that as you can. Um, then you want to just chain one and then turn your work and now we're just going to be working back and forth rows a single crochet 32 single crochet in every row so just chain one and turn single crochet back into that same stitch and one single crochet and every stitch across, you get back over to the other side. I've made it back around and I have my 32 stitches again and I'm just going to chain one and turn and repeat. So I'm just going to keep doing rows of single crochet and there'll be 32 stitches at the end of each row. Now I'm not working in this V area yet. We will clean that up later but right now we're doing the hood. So just continue working back and forth rows of one single crochet in every stitch. Just chain one and turn. Go back into the same stitch.
stitch, single crochet, and then single crochet all the way across till you get to the other side. 32 stitches, chain one and turn, and just keep doing that for several rows. I'm not sure how many yet, so I'm going to do mine and then I'll let you know how many total rows that you need to do. Okay, I went ahead and did 20 rows of for the hood. 20 rows. Now you can do more or less if you want, but when you tie off, leave a long tail so we can sew up the top of the hood. So you want to use your big um, yarn needle and you want to put your hood together at the top and we're just going to sew it together. So take the ends like this and the whole top will get sewed up. Now nice and neat. Now what you want to do is go back and forth. You don't want to go around. So I always go back and forth. Nice and neat. Grab a stitch on this piece and then the, the stitch on this side. Go through. Don't pull it like pull it snug, but don't pull it like super tight that it squeezes your stitches together. But pull it snug because you don't want it coming undone. Just do this all the way to the end. And then the top of your hood will be sewed up. Remember, I still have the right side of my work facing me. I'm not sewing this wrong side out or anything. Just the way you see it is the way I'm, it's going to be seen. I'm not going to flip it out or anything. Now you just go all the way to the end and if you have enough tail left and you want to go down it again, you certainly can just to, to make sure. That's up to you. Um, I actually probably might just do it a couple times and then hide my tail up. Look at it. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So I'm just going to go ahead and go through the inside and hide my tail on the inside of my hood. So I'm going to flip my hood over inside out here and weave my tail in on the inside. So now our hood's all sewed up and we can work on that cleaning up the front of it and that V part. Okay. So there's the hood. All sewed up. All done. Now what we're going to take our yarn. Start again. Still have the right side of my work facing me. We're going to start, let's see here, right up here. So, let's look at our piece that we got laid out here. Here's the two stitches of the V right here. We want to start um, just somewhere maybe right up here where we started the hood and we're going to work it down the V across here and then back up the V and then all the way around the hood back to our starting point. And that's going to clean up the hood and the V. So let me get my piece turned around here. And I apologize that I just can't see it that darn, that darn well because this is so big. So you don't have to start the exact same place that I am but remember right side of work is facing you. Just start somewhere, like here's the V, here's the two stitches that we skipped. Start somewhere right up here where the V and the hood attached. Just start in one of those stitches. And chain one. Now go back into that stitch, single crochet. Now we're going to single crochet in every stitch along or down this, the edge of this V of the sweatshirt, I guess. 
and you can see they kind of just go at the end of the rows of single crochet right here you can kind of stick your finger in and see where they need to go the stitches there right here and that's going to clean up the front of the sweatshirt Clean up all these edges anyways no one wants a messy edge now when you get down here to those two stitches that we skipped work up to work up until you get to those two stitches that we skipped okay now I'm at the two stitches that are open right here that we skipped we're gonna single crochet those together those two stitches that we didn't put any remember we skipped them when we were starting to put the V in so just go into the first one drop a loop go into the next one drop a loop yarn over and go through all three and now I'm going to continue going back up the other side of the V and like I said you can put your finger in the end of the row and kind of see where the stitch needs to go turn my piece around again I feel like I'm just wrestling something down every time I move this thing <laughs> so big okay and then let's continue working and now we're just going to continue going up the hood too to clean the edge of the hood up So now I'm working around the front of the hood, I'm working up the up the top of it towards the seam that we just sewed up. And I'm just putting one single crochet in every stitch and you can see pretty well where the single no crochet needs to go at the end of each row. I was just kind of stick my finger in there and you can kind of feel right where it needs to go I think that's a good thing with this big yarn this yarn's pretty forgiving some yarns not so much but this one is if you make a mistake it's not that bad Okay, here's the seam right here. Do the one stitch right before it and the one stitch right after it. And that will make that seam in the front just kind of be invisible there in the front part. I mean, you'll still be able to see at the top, but you won't be able to see it on the front. And now I'm just going to continue working down until I get back to my starting point putting one single crochet in every stitch around the front of the hood. Okay, when you make it back to the beginning, you want to go ahead and end with a slip stitch into your first single crochet. Not that chain one, but the first single crochet. And then tie that off and then hide that tail. And then we will work on the pocket. We're almost done. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and work on the pocket. Now for the size XL, you wanna start with a chain of 13. 2XL, you wanna start with a chain of 18. And 3XL, start with a chain of 23. Okay, once you get your chain amount that you need, 
you want to go ahead and single crochet in the second stitch from the hook and then one single crochet in every stitch across Okay, for the XL size, when you get to the end, you'll have, that's what I'm making, you'll have 12 stitches. For the 2XL, you will have 17 stitches. And for the 3X, you'll have 22 stitches. So now what we're going to do is chain one and turn our work. Now we're going to put, for row two, we're going to put two stitches in the very first stitch. And then we're going to work one single crochet in every stitch across until we get to the last stitch. And then when you make it to the last stitch, you want to put two stitches into the last stitch. So you put two in the first and two in the last. So now you'll have, for the 1X size, you'll have um, 14 stitches, 2X size, 19 stitches, and 3X size, 24 stitches for round two. Okay, for round three, we're going to chain one and turn. Now we're just going to put one single crochet into the first stitch and then one single crochet in every stitch to the end of the row. So no increasing for round three. It's just one single crochet in every stitch. So when you get to the end, you'll still have the same amount of stitches that you did in row two. So I'll have 14 stitches for the XL, 2XL will have 19 and 3XL will have 24. So now we're going to, for row 4, we're going to chain 1 and turn our work. Now we're going to put two, two single crochets into the very first stitch and then one single crochet and every stitch across until we get to the last stitch And when you make it to the last stitch, you want to put two stitches into the last stitch now. So, uh, XL, you'll have 16 stitches now. 2XL, you'll have 21. And 3XL, you'll have 26 at the end of row 4. Row 5, chain 1 and turn. Now we're just going to go ahead and put one single crochet into the first stitch and one single crochet in every stitch across. So you'll have the same number of stitches in row five as you did in row four.
So row 5 is 16 for 1x, 21 for 2x, 26 for 3x. So we are going to row 6. chain one and turn. Now we're going to add two single crochets to the very first stitch. One single crochet in every stitch across until we get to the last stitch. And then two single crochets into the last stitch. Okay, row. Now we should have XL should have 18 stitches, 2X 23 stitches, and 3X should have 28 stitches at the end of row, row, uh, row six. Row seven, chain one and turn. Now it's just going to be one single crochet and every stitch cross. So you get to the end of the row and you still should have the same amount of stitches as you did in the previous row. Okay, end of row 7, 18 stitches for XL, 23 for 2XL, 28 for 3XL. So we're going to chain 1 and turn for uh, row 8, 2 single crochets into the very first stitch, 1 single crochet in every stitch across until you get to your last stitch. And then two single crochets into your last stitch. So at the end of row eight, one X should have 20 stitches, two X 25 stitches, three X 30 stitches. Now we're going to chain one and turn. One, this is row nine, one single crochet in every stitch. Until you get to the end of the row, you should have the same number of stitches as you did in the previous row. So row 9, even when you get to the end, XL will have 20, 2XL 
25 and 3xl will have 30 so now we're going to increase one more time so round 10 chain one and turn we're going to go into the first stitch and put two single crochets and now we're going to put one single crochet across until you get to your last stitch and then we'll put two single crochets into the last stitch okay I made it to end around 10 and I put two single crochets in my last stitch 1xl should have 22 stitches 2xl should have 27 and 3XL should have um, 32 stitches. Okay, so now we're going to round 11, chain one, and turn. Now, round 11 through 15, we are just going to do one single crochet in every stitch. So, working on a round 11 now, no more increasing. One single crochet in every stitch. And we want to do that back and forth one single crochet in every stitch until we get 50 sorry about that till we get 15 rows done so we're on 11 now and we still should have the same amount of stitches as we do as we did in the previous row so like i said xl will have 22 stitches now through round 15 and 2x will have 27 stitches through round 15 and 3XL will have 32 stitches through round 15. So go ahead and do your one single crochet in every stitch till you finish round or row round 15. Okay, once you get your 15 rounds done, it kind of looks like a pyramid a little bit right now. But we're going to go around the whole thing with single crochet. So I made it to the end of round 15 and I'm just going to chain one. And I'm going to start working down putting one single crochet in every stitch here. You can kind of see the stitches at the end of the row to clean up all these edges. Make it look nice and clean. And then when you get to the corner, I'm almost there. Corner stitch up here at the top, you want to put three single crochets in it. And that is going to make the corner lay flat. And then we'll continue across, putting one single crochet in every stitch across the top here. And we're just going to do this all the way around until we get back to the beginning. One single crochet in every stitch, but in the corners we're going to put three single crochets. So I'm at this corner here, so I'm going to put three single crochets in it. And then I will continue down, putting one single crochet in every stitch along the side here. And I'm going to continue this until I get back to my starting point. Remember to put three single crochets in the next corner that's coming up.
and that just cleans it up and look makes it look nice and neat okay when you make it over here to the end you want to make sure you put three single crochets in your last stitch here I don't know why that noise keeps doing that like that and then we're going to slip stitch into the first single crochet on this side that we started slip stitch into it and then tie that off and hide that tail and then we'll get it sewed on okay now to sew it on you want to make sure you got the front of your work facing you now you can try this on to decide how low or how high you want to sew it because your hands i mean it might be longer on you than it is on my mannequin and or you can decide where you want to put it but if you like mine i counted eight not counting this band down here the first row of single crochet one two three four five six seven i'm going to crochet on that eighth row from the bottom not counting this band and then you want to make sure that it's equal on both sides so this i'm counting this bottom row i counted in and made sure i had the same number of stitches on this side as i did on this side and that's what you want to do just to make sure that it's centered and remember you don't have to sew at the same spot i did but just, you can try it on and decide where you want to sew it. But that's just what I did from not counting this band, the A throw up, and then I just made sure that I had the same number of stitches from the seam here, from this seam. So I'll show you how we're gonna go to how we're gonna sew it real quick. Let me move it up here real quick. Okay, I stuck a couple pins, a few pins to hold it down there at the corners and everything. That way I don't lose where I'm going. Now I'm gonna use my big thick darning needle and a long piece of yarn now I'm gonna start remember when we did the five rows of one single crochet in every stitch I'm gonna start there and, and sew it on there all the way across and then up those five rows and then I'm going to leave these rows open and then I'm gonna sew on the top so let's go ahead and get started here. You want to make sure you put your hand in and you're only going through one um, layer of sweatshirt here. I'm trying to get the best, get the best I can. I ain't got a lot of room. So I'm going to start my on that fifth row up. Let's see. Right here. So I'm just going to go in. Um, go in from underneath. Let me try moving my camera to the side. That might be better. There we go. I think you'll be able to see it better from here. Okay, I'm gonna go in. Make sure you're counting, keeping everything equal. Like I said, it's a good idea to pin it down. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna go in that fifth stitch like that. Pull my yarn up. Remember to only go through one layer of your sweatshirt. Leave a tail there that you can sew in. Now I'm just going to go to the next stitch, go through it, nice and neat. And then back up through the next one, nice and neat, keeping everything lined up on the rows that it's supposed to be. And then, I hope you can see what I'm doing. And the next stitch, down through. Nice and neat. Just keep neat. Just take your time and get it neatly sewed on. Like that. And then up through the next stitch. And then I'm going to round the corner. I'm just going at, at the edge of the stitch. Here, going through. then back up through the edge of the next stitch like that make sure you keep it lined up with the row that you're supposed to be on next one go back down the next stitch so 
So this is what I'm going to do all the way across here. If you can see any more through that. Back up through the next one. So that's really pretty easy. Just, just make sure you're keeping it all lined up. And you're only going through the one top layer of the sweatshirt. You don't want to sew the sweatshirt together. So I'm going to keep doing this all the way across here and then back up those five rows here and then I'm going to tie off and then I'm going to come to the top and I'm just going to sew top together and these sides are going to be left open down to that uh, those five rows. Okay everybody once you get that pocket sewed on that is it that is all there is to it I bring Emmy outside to take pictures of her because the lights better so that's why she's outside but that's it um, so you got your pocket right here in the front and the hood the back it's just plain but you got yourself a nice long oversized sweatshirt I think it turned out nice um, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already uh, don't forget to check out all my other tutorials too I have hundreds of them um, and don't forget to check out bagadaycrochet.com and bagadaycrochet on Facebook. I'll put links to all that stuff below in the description box. And until next time, have a good day.